Hello again. Now, I'm, the next section that we'll be talking about is this topic, the forecast is always wrong. Now, I put it in quotes there because it is possible that the forecast actually matches what ha happens later on in the world. It is not as if there's some devil that if you say yes, it will say no or vice versa. But there are experiences that the forecasts we make about the future tend to differ substantially from what happens. So the objective of this exercise is to give us a realistic assessment of our ability to forecast accurately. You'll come away with the evidence that in general the forecast that we make for the performance of a system 5, 10, 15 years in the future or even a year or six months if it's a fast turnaround kind of uh, technology are different from what we anticipated. Let's look at some evidence. And first of all, the simplest possible case, projection of project costs. So here is a ratio, a graph showing the ratio of real cost, what it actually cost, to the estimated cost. And on the uh, vertical axis here, it is the percent of observations going from zero up to about 15% here of the whole observation on a very simple job, which I'll explain in a moment. So it's the, this is how many observations here, and this is the ratio between the real cost to the estimated cost. So in this case, if the ratio, if you had actually gotten exactly the forecast correctly, you would have one being the ratio. And what you see is that it's very different over a range as evidenced by this uh, histogram this of occurrences, frequency of occurrences. Now let me say a little bit about what this is. This represents what possibly is the simplest possible technological activity. It represents the cost of resurfacing runways. I told you I was interested in airports. This is an airport example. Now resurfacing runways is that you basically put down a layer of asphalt over the top of the runway because after aircraft pound on it and pound on it and pound on it through the many landings that occur, you, it breaks up a bit. So the task is you put down a determined amount of uh, asphalt, a depth, over the width of the air of the runway times the length and the volume is pretty clear. The, the technology is basically you drive up a truck, you dump out the asphalt, you roll it down and that it is. It could hardly be more simple than that. So you might ask, why is it that this ratio of the real cost to the actual cost is so large? Let me emphasize how large it is. It goes down from about 0.5 on one scale to about 2.5 at the other end of the scale. And all this is around a median value of about 1 and a quarter. 1.25 is the highest point. Now, it'd be easy to understand why the uh, median, the most frequent value, is higher than 1. That the, because while you're there, you may decide, oh, I'll do a little extra taxi away, I'll do a little extra here. And it's our common experience that their estimates are sort of undershooting what actually happens. But what's interesting about this case, which is so simple, is that we go from 1.25 as a median down to about half of it, 0 0.5 or 0 0.6, to about double of it. That is, our ability to predict the actual cost is off by a factor of two, half or double what actually is the most frequent cost. This is really remarkable. This is the kind of thing I'd like you to keep in your mind about how difficult it is. Now, why does this occur? It's not because the designers couldn't do the math that width times length times depth is a certain amount of asphalt, and there's how to do it. What happens here in this particular case, as in many cases, is that the, one of the major determinants of this distribution is the fact that energy prices, in this case petroleum prices, but they tie in with other energy prices, eh, vary enormously. 
That is, the price of oil uh, during the last 20 years or so has gone from about $15 to $150 per barrel by a factor of 8 or 9 or 10, however you wish to talk about it, but a huge variation, and that's what's reflected here. That's one of the things that's reflected here. But it's not just asphalt. If you're making cement, if you're heating steel and creating steel, all these are energy intensive. Electricity prices change the same way. So uh, this is dri largely driven by factors beyond our control. In addition to these is the factors that their labor changes, that is, during periods of economic, uh, high economic activity, you'll have to pay overtime for uh, the workers. When there are uh, recessions or bad economic times, you'll get low bids. And so in addition to the materials changes, there are the economic changes. But in short, this particular example gives you an illustration of the way that even in the simplest possible situations, that our ability to predict the actual costs is not very good at all. This is the kind of changes that happen. Now, to amplify this, I have a similar kind of graph here uh, for all kinds of projects. These are, again, this is the, on the vertical axis up here, and we're talking about the average cost compared to the uh, predicted cost. So the predicted cost is one about here, and the averages are whatever it's on here. It goes up to about two and a half in this particular graph. And it's for a whole variety of projects. This was surveyed some time ago. And uh, the quality of this is defined by that little bar on the far side over about in here, where it talks about the standard deviation. What's that, the standard deviation? The standard deviation is a measure of how the dispersion uh, is around the average. So in the previous graph, we saw that there was a very wide dispersion uh, of about a factor of one. But in all these ones here, the standard deviation shows a dispersion, which is this little bar on the far right-hand side for you which is about a standard deviation of close to one half. And these are for ordinary projects, building highways, um, all kinds of uh, ordinary kind of activities. So what we see here, the common experience is that the projected costs in advance are under uh, uh, what actually happened and under by uh, a large amounts, both up and down, high variations, the standard deviation about 50%, plus or minus 50% is what we get. Now, this is for the same kind of figure, but for NASA. NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and it shows these now for high-tech groups. And what you observe uh, when we're talking about high-tech and more innovative and less usual kind of activities that the cost variation is very much higher here. And now we have a lot of uh, these different projects went up to uh, uh, about uh, twice the estimated cost. And over on the right, you see the uh, standard deviation, which is now over 60%. Uh, and it's more variation. So what we observe in each case that I've shown so far is that we don't get it right, and we don't even get it uh, right within a range. There's a large range of possibilities. Our forecasts are, as I suggested at the beginning, our forecasts are wrong. Wrong in the sense that what actually happens is not what you said was happened or what the experts said was happened. And it's not saying the experts aren't good at what they do. It is that the world changes. Things happen. So we need to take this into account as we think about our ability to estimate and manage a set of projects.